Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Welcome to episode 10 of Universe Mode, and we are finally at one of the big five pay-per-views, Money in the Bank. Now, uh, instead of three parts, we're doing two parts. Um, obviously, we're going to have the Women's Championship match, the Undisputed. Becky Lynch is currently the holder. She beat Charlotte on Raw a couple of weeks ago to uh, obtain the title. Uh, we've also got a Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and AJ Styles. I decided why not. We've also got Kofi Kingston versus Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. And we have got Tommaso Ciampa versus Andrade for the WWE Championship. And then to round off the episode, we have got the steel cage match between Kevin Owens and Alistair Black. If you wonder where Ricochet is, well, let's just say he is... Uh, let's find it here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's on the injury list, unfortunately. As you can see here, no longer medically fit to compete after his injury was worsened into such a severe state. Uh, he'll be back in two months time, as you will see right here. Uh, where is he? There he is. He will be back in eight weeks time. So he'll be back sometime around SummerSlam or actually Hell in a Cell. So what will happen with Ricochet? Who knows? Who cares? Uh, before we get into this, um, I did say that if I won the chase, I would I would skip a week of Raw. And if I lost, I would do an episode of SmackDown and NXT. I lost the chase, unfortunately, so I have to do an episode of SmackDown and NXT. I'm excited for that. Gives it a bit more fresh air, a bit more space. And that's why I'm also doing uh, these two matches as well for SmackDown. It just, for me, it'll make sense. Um, I'm hoping to get someone to do the SmackDown side of this, but until I can, it'll just be me controlling SmackDown as well. AXT, I'm kind of thinking it's not really necessarily what I want to do at the moment. I'd do an AXT one by myself in the near future if you want to see me do that after I finish this one for Raw but uh, from now on I'll be controlling both Raw and Smackdown like John Laurinaitis but even better so without further ado let's get straight into the pay-per-view <laughs> And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, money in the bank. So part one will be up to Alistair Black versus Kevin Owens, and then part two will be the men's money in the bank ladder match, and then the main event, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Let's get right into the first matchup. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. But here we are, the uh, the triple threat match between the three most dominant women in WWE. Asuka, the Empress of Tomorrow, is coming for these two women. Obviously, the last time we saw these two face off was at TLC in real life, and Asuka won that encounter and became the SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, 
if my knowledge is correct. But that's Asuka. Let's get out the next contestant. But well, apparently, ladies and gentlemen, um, 53.6% of you are not subscribed. Obviously, that's a massive increase. Well, a massive decrease from what it was before. So, I mean, if we can get that below 50%, then I'd greatly appreciate it. I mean, that's what last 28 days, so. I mean, obviously I'm growing out a brand for us, more opportunities to come in the future ladies and gentlemen, soon come, soon come, and it looks like I'm growing my audience a lot in the UK now, instead of America, but Charlotte flies out here, sorry I forgot to talk about her, I was too busy on my phone, that's my bad. No, but that was Charlotte, that was Asuka, and here comes the undisputed women's champion. Not the man, because it's 2K19. But let's just pretend that the man attire is gone now. But Becca Lynch, the undisputed women's champion. I've been for like a month now. Um, it's been the likes of Alexa Bliss, Charlotte, and Shayna Baszler over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we haven't been able to see it because, uh, unfortunately, Roman Reigns has kind of taken up a lot of the screen time of Raw. Um, there's been some conflicts between uh, Vince and Roman over that, but. I will be playing in this matchup, unfortunately. Um, I want to. I want to play it. So let's get into this. The undisputed women's champion. Who will it be? Becky Lynch. Will she retain? Will Asuka pick up another championship? Or will Charlotte become eleven-time, an eleven-time women's champion? Let's find out. Uh, I am playing Charlotte, so. Uh, I just like these two have fun with it or not. Or not. Weeping. Uh, also, we know Becky and Charlotte have a lot of history. Um, these t two were one half of the four horsewomen. Um, and obviously, these they were both in the main event of WrestleMania 35. Um, and obviously, Becky got the better of that out, got the better outcome of that match by pinning Ronda Rousey. Oh, drop kick by Charlotte. We've got a wonder here. Will Will Becky be able to cope with two of the most elite? fighters in the women's division as we know Charlotte a 10 time women's champion and Asuka is just an unstoppable force who was unbeaten for like 434 days or I think that's it in Puck's title or something but she was unbeaten for a very long time I can't remember the day because of how long it's been, it's been. But you know what I mean. To be fair, Asuka was beaten by Charlotte by a submission, of no less, to beat the streak of Asuka, which no one saw coming. I feel like Charlotte Flair is a bit of a lesser known John Cena, if you know what I mean. I mean, between WrestleMania 33 and 35, she was unstoppable. I mean, pretty much no one pinned Charlotte for a while. 
Except for Becky, because, you know, she got a massive following from the crowd after SummerSlam. But also, um, obviously a bit of history with Becky and Asuka. Um, Becky's only beaten Asuka once and now was at the Royal Rumble, uh, 2020. Um, before that, she'd never beaten Asuka. Asuka had always got the better of her. And obviously this was when Asuka was a heel that Becky beat her because apparently a heel Asuka is a bad Asuka. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyways, Becky... Speak of Becky and Asuka, look at Becky in the corner with Asuka, Asuka reverses. Oh, Charlotte going for a belly to belly, but Becky reverses. Uh, I was going to make this a, uh, the Money in the Bank pay for you three parts, but I felt like that would be too long for years, and I wanted to release both of them on the weekend. And I just didn't feel like a three part series from Friday to Sunday would do it justice. I feel like Saturday and Sunday would be perfect, just a bit like WrestleMania is. Well, should be. But yeah, um, Saturday, this will come out. Uh, this is like the kick off show to the main event which is the Men's Money in the Bank match and Roman Reigns vs Drew McIntyre and Last Man Standing. Um, a lot of you didn't know about the Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, it is pretty much a uh, eight man ladder match so I have decided to add for team, well for the Raw side Seth Rollins and for the Smackdown side the man who recently actually cashed in on Drew McIntyre. Uh, that was the miss. So, I know they didn't have to qualify for it, which that's my bad. I didn't know that it was an eight man, man a match instead of a six. So, that's my bad. Um. What Charlotte's signature? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's, it's a spear. I'm stupid. Alright. But, just, if you see Seth and Miz in the match, don't be surprised. That's just because I decided to add them in. Because right now, I'm not really using Seth. If not, I want to. It's just, I don't feel like he, there's nothing right for him at the moment. And Miz just because he's the current champ, current, uh, well he was the current Mr. Money in the Bank when I put him in the match. Uh, I decided to put him in, be a bit thin. But yeah, everyone else besides from them two have pretty much qualified. Uh, Cesaro, Big E and Shinsuke Nakamura for Smackdown qualified. Cesaro, I think he beats um, Shelton Benjamin, Big E, beat Xavier Woods, yeah, no, um, don't ask me, that's what the CPU decided to do the matches, um, and also Shinsuke beats, I can't remember who he beat now, um, oh, Becky Lynch wins, <laughs> um, yeah, Becky Lynch is still your undisputed women's champion. Um, pins me after a disarmor. Charlotte's arms with the ropes. But yeah, let's, let's move on to match up two and I'll talk more about the Money in the Bank match. So, um... As I was saying, I think Shinsuke, I think he beat Rusev for the rights to the Money in the Bank match. Um, yeah, pretty much anyone who isn't employed at the moment, WWE, 
besides from Dean Ambrose and stuff, the people kind of like mid card. Dean Ambrose, same for later. Rusev and that are on SmackDown or NXT. But probably one of the better matches of the night we're going to see Undertaker versus AJ Styles in Hell in a Cell. Now, we saw Undertaker interfere in AJ Styles versus Drew McIntyre or Samoa Joe. Um, but Undertaker wanted to make a statement against AJ and AJ weren't going for that. He weren't falling for that. So AJ decided to uh, challenge Undertaker to a match and he accepted. And right now we are going to be seeing the aftermath of AJ's challenge. Obviously we know Undertaker, this is his playground. He has been in pretty much every... No he hasn't, I'm stupid. He's been in the most Hell in a Cell matches I think, or, was it, or is it Triple H? It's either Undertaker or Triple H. Yeah, I'll just take her. I think it's Triple H after. Um, it's Undertaker then Triple H, I think. But Undertaker has been in this match 14 times. And he has won 8 of them and lost 6. Um, one of those 8 were was actually a win against Triple H at WrestleMania 28, one of my favourite matches of all time. Just the emotion of that match was so high and so memorable and of course was the end of an era. But, I want to take it back after eight, nine years to compete once again in the Devil's Playground. We've got to take her out. Let's bring out AJ Styles. <sighs> AJ could have left well enough alone. Um, obviously, this is AJ Styles' first Hell in a Cell match. And it's against the man who created the fucker. So, I'm not really expecting big things for it from AJ. I'm not expecting him to be too creative in the, in the cell. Um, and... We know that AJ has been in multiple matches since being in the WWE. But this is his first time in this one. So will AJ conquer Undertaker? Or will Undertaker send AJ to the depths of hell? Let's get into it. I decided to play the Undertaker for this one. Um, it's not a title match, one and two. It's not of any like major significance. And also, I just want to have fun. So I'm not going to be playing Arsenal Black vs Kevin Owens, I'm not going to be playing the Money in the Bank match, I'm not going to be playing Reigns vs McIntyre. They're the matches I'm not playing. And I might not, and I'm, I'm not playing Champa vs Andrade either, so. Jeff Hardy vs Kofi Kingston, that's the last one I'm playing, so. Take away Ruthless, Right Swage, if AJ reverses as well, take her again. Oh, more, more hits to AJ. Take it out, lane and go. Oh, AJ reversed. Oh, so to take up and take up, throw him back in the ring. This is us take us playground, his yard, and you're not gonna get away with this, AJ. Oh, 
a standing suplex. Oh, wrenching and just punching the neck of Styles there. Oh, elbow to the face. And oh, oh, reverse. I have no idea what I was going to say then, but anyways, AJ on the outside of the ring, take her, punches AJ, oh, his back went against the cell, that must hurt. Oh, ball back at ring, AJ throwing take it on the ropes, oh, drop kicks him but did nothing, oh, what's take her doing? Last ride. Damn. <laughs> it's taken already making easy work of AJ. Throwing him out to the outside at cell. Picks up AJ. Uh, we see Corey, Michael and uh, Byron on the outside. Oh, AJ we have punched the taker after take a missed. And AJ throwing Taker, oh, to the floor. Oh, AJ with an uppercut to Undertaker. Oh, Taker with a reversal. And throwing AJ against the cell. Oh, push to the back, but AJ reverses. AJ throwing Taker away from away from where he wants to go oh punch by take oh AJ reverses and a, a forearm by Styles for an AJ oh punching AJ into the cell wall and what's Taker doing oh my god no Taker gets AJ up for a power bump through the wall oh my god Holy shit! Taker sending AJ Styles through the cell wall. Taker with punches to AJ. Now they're on the outs on the outside. Not where AJ wants to be, because we know how creative Undertaker could get. On the outside of the cell, but AJ will be with a reversal. Oh AJ will be a reversal again. Oh Taker. Oh no, the dead man scaling up the cell. Oh, AJ, don't. AJ's gonna join him. Now we know how creative one is taking can get on top of the cell. Oh, AJ picks up Styles. Oh, power slam on top of the cell. What's he doing here? Take a sizing up AJ for a choke slam through the cell. <laughs> a choke slam to hell. Literally. And this is awesome. AJ with a kick out at two and a half. How is he still alive? That's a better question. Oh, what's Taker doing? Oh, we haven't seen this one in a while. Top rope. He's going for old school. Picks up Styles and throws him out the ring. For Styles against the floor again. And for his styles out of the cell again. What's he planning on doing with him? Oh, punch to AJ, but AJ reverses. Taker reverses AJ. A punch to AJ's head. Oh, AJ reverses Undertaker. And oh, clothesline by Styles. 
Oh, Taker reverses. Where's the dead man going? Oh, not again. AJ, you better not do this. Think about your kids, AJ. Oh, take away a punch to AJ. And another one. No. Please don't. Oh, AJ with a reversal. Not halfway up the set. Take a reversal with the head. But oh my god. AJ's got to be broken in half. His head bending back on itself. How is AJ still managing to get up? Is this heart or is this stupidity? Oh, Taker waiting for Styles at the top. Oh, Taker. With a two-star pile driver on the top of the cell. Oh, Styles with a reversal. Where's he going? <laughs> Taker's like. Taker's not letting AJ go that easy. Oh, Styles with a reversal again. Oh! Ends a Gary by AJ. Oh. How'd he back up already? Taker. He's getting Styles up. Oh no, Taker, don't! Oh, through two tables. AJ Styles has been launched into two tables. Look at his shoulders. And he's, he's stirring. How? What's Taker doing? He's coming back down. Oh, I don't know how he managed to do that, but AJ has been put through hell. My voice is hurting from this. <laughs> oh, why am, I, why am I going there? There we go. Started in the ring. It's going to end in the ring. Oh. Take away a punch to Styles. And another one. Oh, boot to Styles. He's picking up AJ now. And he's going for it again. This is a grueling match. Oh, the dead man taking off the straps. This has got to be it. Turn around, AJ. Oh, he reverses. And take her. Reverses the brain buster into. Oh, this is it. This is it. Surely. The tombstone pile driver. Cover. One. Two. AJ kicks out. Take a look at over his victim. That's all he is. To take a. Take a pick Styles. And it looks like he picked correctly here. How Taker is moving at this pace, I have no idea. Oh, Styles will run. DDT Taker stirring and Styles with a stomp to the arm of Taker he's going up top oh Taker reverses his frog splash and just launches him out the ring like he's nothing Take a coming 
back of the ring now. Where's he? What's he doing? Eh, fuck it. Oh, looks like Taker was about to have some fun with ref there, but AJ got back in the nick of time. Oh, neck breaker. Where's AJ heading? Taker picks up AJ, oh, drops him on the side of his head, not the side of his head, the side of his body. Oh, Taker catches AJ with the choke slam. Take a look at the ref, oh, clothesline. Oh, Styles with a reversal and drags his arm to the floor, but Taker reverses and just Styles. With, oh, Taker with a close line to knock him out. This is the dead man's yard, and he should never forget that. Oh, Styles with a forearm and oh, she Roshi. And Styles to the outside. What's he doing? Oh, he's setting it up. Oh, take him with a reversal. And catches Styles for the choke slam. He's calling for it again. He's calling for the tombstone. Oh, AJ reverses the tombstone. And. Oh! Inverted DDT. What's AJ doing? A kick to the back of the dead man that's got to hurt. Oh, AJ. Right to the arm of the dead man. AJ. Oh, take it. Oh, and knee to the chest of Styles. A brutal uppercut just sends him flying to the floor. What's Taker doing here? He's thinking. Oh. AJ with a leg sweep. Oh. What's AJ going to do here? Got to take his arm in a lock and take her reversing the maneuver. AJ in the corner. Oh, he reverses. Take again, AJ into the corner again. And a close line. Oh, elbow drop and take it just gets straight back up. Taker exhausted, just trying to find any fuel left. Full of choke slam. And a cover. One, two, kick out by AJ. And a kick to the back of Styles, but Styles just takes it like a man. Oh, what's AJ doing here? Styles clash. But take her with an elbow to the back. And a big boot. AJ hit his submission move. Now it's time for Taker to do his. Has AJ in for Hell's Gate. Can he finish him off? Ah, uh, AJ taps to Hell's Gate. Woo. What a matchup for the dead man. Putting AJ through everything. The cell, hell, tables. AJ tried to fight off the slaughter of the dead man. 
but nothing worked. Oh, what's Taker doing now? Oh, he has AJ for. I think that's. Old school. Styles getting up. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Okay, I'll explain what the fuck just happened there. Taker throws Styles to the outside. Look at the animosity Taker caused to AJ on the outside. And Taker got Styles for a choke slam. Taker picking up AJ not on the broken table of two stone pile driver. It looks like that chapter of Taker's career is put behind him. Next up we have the United States Championship match. Let's get right into it. Here he is, the challenger, Kofi Kingston. Kofi earned his way to a US title shot after losing to Tommaso Ciampa obviously these two men fought for the right to face the US and WWE Champion and that is why Tommaso Ciampa is in the main the well, Smackdown's main event tonight but at least Kofi has got a title shot tonight unlike his uh, other two brethren and here we go uh, by the way, I wonder where the women's money in the ladder match is. I'm thinking of doing that at SummerSlam. Just so it's not too crowded by Money in the Bank. But here is the ultimate extremist. This man has put himself through hell and back. And the best he's had is one WWE Championship. <laughs> That's his biggest highlight at I think it was Armageddon 2008 beating Edge and Triple H to become the WWE Champion. Is Hardy hoping to get back on top of the SmackDown food chain? Let's see. Because we can never know what will happen in the WWE. Maybe it might be the US vs WWE Champion at SummerSlam, who knows. Obviously, um, if you've noticed as well, these are the old title designs, not the newest ones that are in WWE at the moment. I just think these look way better. Cloffy Kingston, there he is. Mad Lad. Jeff Hardy. Of 
could this be the last time Jeff looks at the United States Championship whilst it's his own? Or will his reign continue? Let's find out right now. Kofi Kingston, Jeff Hardy. Let's get into it. Uh, I am playing Jeff Hardy. I said this is the last match I'm going to be playing. Um, the rest of them I'm not playing. Because they're too key to the future. So, get mad. <laughs> oh. um, but by the time I'm recording this, will be the last time I'm recording for a little while. Um, I won't be here until. Uh, pretty much until the 1st of March. I'm taking a break until then. Um, me and Chris have been looking into improving the chase. We've got some good ideas flowing. Chris thought of an amazing idea to make it a bit shorter and more fun because we saw a couple of um, live chat comments saying it's taken a bit too long. Obviously it took two and a half hours which is pretty long. The TV show itself usually takes about an hour. So we've got some good ideas. Um, the date that we're looking at getting the second episode out, March, I think we'll try March 13th. I think that's the next episode that we'll try, I think that's the next time we'll try to release an episode with a chase. Nothing earlier, because we want a while for it to actually delve in and see and we can actually work on actually improving the program that we've got. Obviously um, you all love the program that LDG myself and Chris developed. Obviously LDG was the major person behind the program uh, which shout out to him. Um, and yeah I helped a bit, if I'm being honest I didn't help out that much, I was just a bit busy trying to do the promotional stuff and shit, but you know, that's that's what makes us all work so well, we all have our different parts to the puzzle, we, have our, we all have our keys to the kingdom and I just, I'll promote it, Chris Early Jr. will work on it, and yeah, um, but I wouldn't lock the date, this date in, but March 13th is the potential date we're doing episode 2. It's going to be a rematch between Team LG and Team Onzo. Um, I'm looking at doing it two hours earlier. Um, because it's my show, my schedule, so I'll get mad. Um, but pretty much, uh, don't set the date in, March 13th could be the next day for it but oh SOS by Kofi Kingston going for the cover now one two oh Jeff Hardy gets out of the car too um but that is pretty much what they're going on oh trouble in paradise by Kofi will this be it cover and one two Oh, Jeff kicks out just for the count of three. Kofi Dillon became a US champion again. He's hyped, he's hyped. <laughs> oh, bringing Jeff back into the middle of the ring, going for another cover. One. Oh, kick out for the count of two there by Jeff. Uh, but, yeah, besides with Chase, I've got a couple of ideas that we can do for some of our stuff. Um, I've been thinking of a couple of ideas but for now we're just going to work on the chase we're going to get like the first five episodes out for that and then we're going to work on some other stuff to have alongside it um, the chase takes a bit more time than other stuff because the program is so complex and so in indulged, indulged you have to put your a lot you have to put your 100% into it as well as it won't work but some of the ideas I've got will not take much time it'll be like about two hours just to find the people and then we're sorted um, 
but oh Jeff oh went for a diving crossbody but that didn't work at all <laughs> oh what's Kofi doing here oh a very crazy arm drop there and Jeff into the corner um, yikes Oh, Kofi. Mm. A falcon arrow. Uh, what was going to say? But basically, um, the chase is going to be one of the main shows. I'm hoping to get three main shows that we could do either every week or every other week. Uh, one of the other two that I'm thinking of, um, that I've discussed with Chris, is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The third one, we're not so sure yet, but, um, yeah, we're, we're building a, some strong foundations to something very innovative here. Like, I've seen nothing like this on YouTube before, what we're doing, and it's fucking crazy. So, I hope you're all hooked in and ready for the wild ride, cowboy. Whee! Oh, swan Tom by Jeff. And a cover. One, two. Oh, kick out by Kofi. Uh, but anyways, we've got a lot of good stuff planned here. Um, it's all just coming into fruition. I feel like by the summer of 2021, we'll have everything sorted and everything will be in a proper placement and everything will be very oh trouble in paradise sorry i'll have to talk, stop talking in a second here trouble in paradise by kofi dragging jeff to the middle of the ring and what's this now cover one two kofi champion kofi is the new united states champion after a trouble in paradise And this is why it's the last one, last match I'm playing. <laughs> uh, but Kofi, the new United States champion. One of SmackDown's major titles have changed hands, but will the other one? Let's find out right now. Uh, just coming in, um, I'll look at on Twitter there. Uh, the Bad Batch will start on May the 4th. From what I've just seen, so you know what's gonna be happening happening from May the fourth, don't you? Reviews and watch parties. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing watch parties for one division, but I was gonna leave that to LDG and Onzo because they're doing pretty well with it so far. But Falcon and Winter Soldier, from then onwards, I'm doing watch parties and episode reviews. Here he is. Hardly anything from the crowd here. No, no one's giving anything to Tommaso Ciampa tonight. But. If I had to take a guess on who's going to win the WWE Championship tonight between Andrade and Tommaso. I'm going to have to give it to Andrade because of Zelina. But anyways. Um. Let's get away from that awkward silence, shall we? Now, this is the Andrade we should be seeing on uh, on weekly television. The WWE Champion to, uh, Andrade. That's what I'd like to see. Andrade is a champ. Got the popcorn out, ready for this one. People not really giving Andrade the respect he's been trying to earn the last couple of weeks.
But we do know that Andrade will not back down to Tommaso Ciampa. I don't think these two have ever faced off before. No, they have not. Andrade has faced Tommaso Ciampa's uh, tag team, well his former tag team partner Johnny Gargano though. Also we know in real life um, Zelina Vega was fired but you know I'm not as tight as that, I'll keep her here. But let's get into the matchup. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the WWE Championship. Tommaso not looking in a good mood tonight. Andrade Cien Aramas. Obviously, WWE nowadays is just known as Andrade. Obviously, Andrade, I think, is so underrated nowadays. Um, him, Ricochet, and Champa, so underrated. Alistair Black's also one of them. I feel like Ricochet, Alistair and um, Andrade should go back to NXT. It's where they belong. But, in our universe mode, Andrade is in the main title picture. With Tommaso Ciampa, which is now underway. Oh, back body drop by and uh, Ciampa. Get the popcorn out for this one. We know how meticulous Tommaso Ciampa can be picking apart the body parts of his opponents. Randy Orton-esque like as we know Randy Orton to be like as well. Just some more breaking news. The Big Show is signed with AEW. What the fuck? <laughs> Austin was like to hear about this one, wasn't he now? Oh, I've tried it with a flurry of hits here. A lot of things are happening at one point. Bad batch announcements. Oh! A close line Larian. <laughs> By the Battle of Champa. Oh, the power bump onto the knees. He's got it in. Cover. One. Two. Andrade kicks out.
Oh, into the corner and a drop kick to Tommaso Ciampa. Andrade picks up Ciampa and puts him outside the ring. Oh, a flurry of reversals here and Andrade with a drop kick. Alright, throws Champa back in the ring. Oh, picks him up, but Champa with your elbow to the stomach. Low blow and Champa is disqualified. Champa just got himself disqualified. Well. I don't think this feud is over, but for now, Andrade he keeps holding the championship because Champa did a low blow. Well, what else do you say about that? Eh? Let's get to the main event of episode one out of two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, see you on top. Time it is, baby. It is time for the Intercontinental Championship match between Kevin Owens and Alistair Black. A rematch from Extreme Rules. Fortunately, Ricochet could not make it due to Seth Rollins. Per like. Badly injured his head. During a backstage confrontation, Seth curb stopped Ricochet's head onto a briefcase. the word of a key eyewitness which was Kevin Owens he said he, he saw Seth Rollins in the locker room with Ricochet's head on the briefcase and he stomped his head into the briefcase and of course there was no footage found of the events so Kevin's word had to be trusted at this point and Seth is currently Suspended until Ricochet returns. I'm joking, anyways. Uh, Seth's in the Money in the Bank match. <laughs> but Seth will have to face Ricochet when he comes back, which looks like it will be Hell in a Cell, so it might be a Hell in a Cell match. It's all up to the challenger, but the champion of the match. Alistair Black make his way out here. As you saw in episode one, the main event, um, Alistair Black put on a brilliant performance against Roman, but of course Roman being the tribal chief he is, found a way to win the match. Well, here goes Black in the ring now. Let's get right to this match up. The main event of episode one, well episode 10, but part one of two of Money in the Bank. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Kevin Owens. And also the champion. The 
Dutch destroyer Alistair Black Let's get right to the show darling. I can't wait Let's get into it These two men have been feuding ever since this began Oh Kevin with a Samoan drop Both the Raw General Manager CM Punk and Alistair Black have both said if Kevin loses then this is the last chance he gets at the title but if Alistair loses they'll go one more round at SummerSlam so Kevin needs to win tonight to get his title back Or it's over for him and the IC title. Oh, Alistair. Oh, he tried to escape. But Kevin. Oh! Drops him back into the ring and the cover. Kick out at one. Cover by Alistair. Oh, some mission here by Black. That's Kevin that Kevin's arm in a in a tough situation, but Kevin gets out. Picks up Alistair, but Alistair bows out with an uppercut. And throws Kevin into the corner and double knees to the back. Well, Drops him on his back here and stomps to him. Oh, Alistair getting up, but Kevin stops him in his tracks. Oh, no. Looks like Kevin wants to escape. Alistair gets straight back up. Oh, punch to the back of Kevin. And another one. Oh, but Kevin reverses the punch. Oh, he jumps back down. And Alistair, what's he doing here? Throws Kevin in the corner. And oh, Kevin reverses. Oh, Blackwood kicks to the back of the leg of Owens. And an exploder suplex. Oh, Alistair in the corner here. Calls his target. And he ends it all oh, with a knee to the face of Kevin Owens. But Kevin's getting straight back up. The resilience of Kevin here tonight. The desperation. Remember, as long as Alistair Black is champion, if Kevin loses tonight, Alistair, he will never get another shot whilst Alistair is champion. And Alistair already tried to escape here. Kevin needs to get up quickly before Alistair gets out. Oh, looks like Alistair's already up. Come on, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Oh, punches Black. Oh, and another. Oh! Alistair kicking Kevin off the rope. Now Alistair having to try and get out of there quick before Kevin comes back up. Kevin's back up and. Oh! Alistair just looking at Kevin and seeing the life of Kevin draw away as Alistair wins the matchup. And he's still your intercontinental champion. There it is. Again, Alistair dominating Kevin Owens. And wins the match. You see Kevin in the corner in despair. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching part one of two of Money in the Bank. Hope you enjoyed. What's next for What's next for Alistair Black after leaving Kevin behind now? Who will win Money in the Bank? What's next for Undertaker? Will McIntyre dominate Reigns, or will Reigns make Alistair? Will 
will Reigns make McIntyre fall the line? Find out next episode, but until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all March 1st.